And uh, we understand, Tom, that this was a meeting at Liz Truss's request? Yes, Number 10 have said today, just in the last few minutes, that this was the request of the Prime Minister rather than the request of the chairman of the 1922 committee. Number 10 say that they have been meeting on an almost daily basis and that Liz Truss wants to sort of gauge the mood of the party. However, it's reasonable to treat that with a little bit of scepticism <laughs> because, of course, the person who has been the most... the key conduit between the parliamentary party and the prime minister over the course of the last five weeks has been Sir Graham Brady. He was the person who, uh, it is understood, met with Liz Truss uh, on Monday afternoon mm. to tell her that the 56 Sixth threshold may well have been. This breached. is the letters going into the 1922 committee from the MP. Exactly, no confidence letters. Fifteen percent of of the party ordinarily in normal times would cause a no-confidence vote. However, we're not in normal times because a no-confidence balance happened just a few months ago. There is a 12-month immunity period following that. The, the executive of the 22 could, however, change the rules uh, at their arbitrary whim. And now 14 Conservative MPs have gone public mm. with their demands for Liz Trust to quit. That doesn't sound like a huge number, but it's doubled in 24 hours. How serious is that number, 14, that are willing to go public? Exactly. I think that's the key point, willing to go public. We understand that there are far, far more who have submitted their letters privately. Now... It's so tempting to talk about letters because they're sort of um, a, a very dramatic and obvious thing. But really, so much of how Liz Truss's premiership may uh, survive or otherwise is based on the mood rather than right. the actual numbers of things. And, and if... Graham Brady says, look, you, you, you just have completely lost this authority. He may well be someone who could tell her the gig is up. And he has been the person throughout the last few weeks. He was the person who said, look, you're not going to be able to get the 45p rate of tax cut through. You're going to have to U-turn on that. He was the person who has throughout this, at every stage of Liz Truss's premiership, been the person, been the bearer of bad news, if you will, yeah. in terms of where the party sits. Is, is the other dynamic the fact that when the MPs are no longer frightened of the whips. Mm. That's when they really start. The discipline breaks down and they go public. And, you know, it's not just the numbers. It's what they're saying. Uh, looking at Henry Smith, member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, um, I saw uh, Liz uh, Truss in action as the Foreign Secretary and I knew that she would be out of her depth as Prime Minister. You know, this is a senior committee member mm. uh, actually saying that in public. So did the events of last night with this fracking vote really break... That's a, a murder, the silence that the MPs normally have. I think, if anything, it demonstrated what was fairly widely understood beforehand, just the lack of authority. This feels like a minority government, mm. and yet it's a, a government with a majority of Still over 70. Yeah. And they won uh, that vote handsomely, actually, after all that. They did. Another, after, after, uh, about 40 Tory MPs didn't vote with a whip, did they? Despite Wendy Morton, the chief whip, apparently resigning halfway through that vote and then unresigning a couple of hours later. Number 10 said she never resigned at all, but according to members of parliament who were in that division lobby, it was chaos.